everybody. Uh, my name is David. Um, for those of you I haven't met already, uh, this is uh, Cooking Pearl with Chef Solo. Um, <clears throat> my voice is a little trashed at this point, so I apologize if I can't project all the way to the back. Um, let me get started. So this talk is really kind of about configuration management. So who already knows what configuration management is? It's heard of it. Some hands. Um, have you, have people have heard of Chef, configuration management tool. A few hands. How many people know about Pearl? Okay, everybody in the room, hopefully. So, you're, so we're all at least have, have some common ground. Um, configuration management is uh, uh, sort of a discipline of using tools to configure a system um, using uh, code in a repeatable way. So there's some tools like Chef, Puppet, CF Engine out there. Um, I'm going to talk about Chef uh, today. But the whole idea is you want to try to go from uh, an unknown state to a target state. So you should be able to define a target state, declare it. Uh, and then have the configuration management tool automatically figure out what does it take to get me from some unknown state to that target state. So you can think about that as going from like a brand new machine that's completely deployed to, uh, to having a, uh, an app completely deployed. So from bare metal with just enough on it to get the configuration management tool running to deploying whatever you need to. Uh, and that means what we really want to do is define infrastructure as code. So instead of having infrastructure, configuration, and deployment be a manual task, be a task where you've got to remember what to type in or have a checklist, you want it to be automated, you want it to be repeatable, so it's the same thing every time you do it. Uh, and ultimately, that means that we can start applying the kind of disciplines we apply to the rest of our code, which is it can become testable. So uh, the other advantage of configuration management is it gives you one tool to deploy the whole stack. So if you have an application, and you need a database, and you need a uh, caching layer, and you want uh, uh, some sort of a reverse proxy, or uh, whatever it is that you need, messaging queues, you use one configuration management tool to deploy all those pieces, deploy all their configurations so they all work together, instead of having to do use one tool for one, one tool for the other, or having a systems administrator go and manually typing stuff in to get all of those to launch. Uh, now, Chef, uh, the Chef tool loves Ruby. It's written in Ruby. Uh, lots of Ruby application stacks uh, support within it. Um, Chef also uh, loves Python pretty much. Um, it, it knows about virtual environment, about PIP, uh, it can deploy Django apps. Uh, all that's great. Chef really has no clue about Perl. Um, it knows about the system Perl and CPAN. So you can use Chef to say, if I, do I have a system Perl install? If not, have my operating system package deployed for me. Uh, and it can also do a, a pretty kind of cur uh, rudimentary uh, CPAN configuration, deploy some modules from CPAN, uh, but that's it, um, at least up until now. So if you need a, a different version of Perl than the system Perl for an operating system where you have version dependency sets, I want to deploy this app with this set of dependencies, but I also want to deploy the app with a different set of dependencies to see if it breaks, if uh, I'm installing different things from CPAN, or you want to run two versions simultaneously and test them, that's pretty hard. Um, but we have tools for that in Perl. We've already, we've already developed them, uh, particularly over the last couple of years. Now we have things like Pearl Brew. Uh, how many people know about Pearl Brew or use Pearl Brew? Okay, everybody's pretty much into it. Localib, local, okay. Um, Carton is pretty new. Um, some people know about Carton. Uh, it's Miyagawa's uh, sort of next tool to try to do uh, isolated application deployment. You'll see a quick example of that today. Um, it's still sort of marked as alpha, but I think it's getting pretty close to where we can start to use it, uh, as you'll see. So the task that I'm going to demonstrate today is let's deploy a simple plaque app, um, which is again the Miyagawa and others putting up this web framework. Uh, let's deploy that onto a, a virtual machine. Um, I'm not going to actually try to do that live, though if we have enough time I'll show it to you at the end. Um, but there's four files that really matter here. So we have a very simple app.psgi file that just says load up my, uh, load up my library and, and run it. Um, this is the Hello World, it's a plaque app, the basic thing it does is at the end it says, hey, here's Hello World, and it gives us the, the time that it ran. Um, Makefile um, has a couple of things. One is we need plaque because the application is written in plaque. And this Makefile also specifies we're going to have Starman. And even though nothing in the code says it, we need Starman, we put it here so that Carton knows that we want to use Starman to actually uh, execute. Starman is a web, uh, a web server that runs plaque applications. Um, Carton lock is a file that contains a version, all of the version prerequisites. So when I sort of create the Carton lock file with Carton, it looks at my, what I have installed on uh, in my development machine, freezes all this, says, okay, you want this version of Plaque, this version of Starman, this version of everything that they depend on, the entire tree, says these are the versions you're going to use. And then I commit that to the repository. And then I can use Carton uh, 
uh, to install them and use them at runtime. So on the machine I want to use it on, it's in current install. That looks at the current lock file. Use the CPM minus to install that entire dependency tree. Then you can cart and exec it using the library that has the application and use star and then fire it up on a port and so on. And that will use all of the locally installed uh, dependencies that Carton has managed to. So that's kind of how Carton works. Um, but yeah, that's kind of mandatory. We want to make Chef do that. So step one is to teach Chef about probe Um So I'm going to give a very quick Chef glossary. Um, so when Chef talks about a cookbook, a cookbook is a a uh, directory that contains metadata and mostly it contains recipes. Recipes are um, essentially scripts in Ruby that tell Chef how to deploy uh, whatever it is you're trying to deploy. And that uses a combination of resources, which could be like a, an operating system package as a resource or a Git repository as a resource. Uh, and providers are the tools that know how to deploy something on a particular environment. So if you say, I want the uh, build essentials package, uh, that's the resource. Then you have to have a provider that says, oh, well, Build Essentials on uh, Debian is actually called Build Essentials, but if you're on a Fedora system, Build Essentials is actually called something else, and you need to use Yum instead of App, and so that kind of manages all the system level differences. Um, the other part of the glossary is a node. A node is a computer that you're running, it on, uh, running to deploy something to a chef. And attributes are just parameters, key value pairs that uh, actually do the configuration different uh, for each node. Um, so the solution that I came up with was to create a Pearl Brew cookbook that does a few things for you. So first of all, um, it'll bootstrap Pearl Brew. So when you it, uh, run the, uh, the Pearl Brew recipe on the server you're trying to deploy to, it bootstraps Pearl Brew off the net. Um, and then it gives you a series of resources that you can deploy. So you can use Pearl Brew Pearl, Pearl which says, give me a, a Pearl from Pearl Brew. Probe lib, which configures a local lib against it. Um, Probe run, which then executes shell commands using one of these that you've defined previously. So, <clears throat> next thing we have to do is actually create a recipe for this Hello World application. Uh, now, here's the warning: there's actually Ruby DSL coming up. So, uh, if you know Ruby, you'll see this. If you don't know Ruby, it still reads pretty clearly. Uh, it might be there's actually more Ruby than Perl in this talk, but. Uh, it also works. Ruby people love DSLs, but it's all pretty clear to see what happens. Um, so here's the rest, first part of the recipe for Hello World. There's three parts. Uh, I broke it up just so it's kind of nice and big to see. So this is the part that gets Perl and Carton ready to actually deploy Hello World. So we include the recipe Perl Brew. That bootstraps Perl Brew if it's not already bootstrapped on the server. Um, and now we're going to specify a couple of variables. Perl verb says, what version do I want Perl Brew to install? So if you're used to typing Perl Brew, Perl uh, dash 5 dash 14.2, that's the same sort of thing you put there. Here, I've said that this, I want this from the node, uh, uh, node attribute. So I'm going to, in a configuration file you'll see later on, say, well, I want the person deploying Hello World to tell me what version of Perl they want to use. So it basically picks up this attribute to say what version of Perl you want to use. Uh, defines a, a carton parameter, just a string, which is that with the at carton, the way Perl likes to define uh, libraries. Now that we've got those defined, now we actually request the resources. So now we're instructing the recipe, give me a probe Perl that we've specified, give me a probe lib that we specified, and now probe run cpad m cpad minus carton, and use this probe that we've defined. So that will actually go and install carton and all of its dependencies into this library that we've defined. There. So that's the first part of this. That says, make sure I've got, for me to run to install uh, Hello World, make sure that I've got Pearl Brew and Carton ready to go. Part two is then we actually need to get the application from somewhere. So in this case, we're going to deploy it from Git. So we say package Git, that makes sure that the operating system package for Git gets installed and is available to us. And then there's a Git resource we can use. So this says, put into this directory uh, a checkout of this Git repository. And the reference is the git tag or the git, uh, the git branch that I want to have checked out. So it'll clone and then it will check out whatever it is I've defined as my deployment tag for hello world for that now. Um, so that gets the application onto the server. And then the third part is to fire it up. So here we do more back to pro brew run. We do the same sort of cart and install recipe, cart and exec recipes we saw before. But now we say run it in this directory and uh, use the Perl carton that we have, we have defined. So this now says, here's how I want you to actually fire this application up. Um, now, so that is the recipe that lives, in this case, it's actually the repository for the Hello World that I showed you. Um, I put that up again at the end. So that's a recipe 
for deploying Hello World, and it uses the Polo <laughs> recipe, which I've written. Now we want to deploy it to a virtual machine. Um, and here I'll talk about Chef versus Chef Solo. The Chef model and the Puppet model is to have a server in the middle that actually holds all your configuration data. You have some repository with your cookbook to your configuration data. Use a tool called Knife to push that to the server, and then the actual servers that are being um, configured then pull that information out periodically every half hour or so. They check in and say, is there anything new I have to configure in the room? Um, that means there's a lot of stuff you have to do in the middle to manage this, and it means that the actual record of all of your knife commands doesn't live anywhere. So if you actually want, if this died somehow and you had to recreate it from scratch, you have to go back and run knife again and again and again for all the configuration steps that you took, which is kind of crazy to me because now you've just lost the, the ability to have everything in a repository and control. I was reading online, somebody says they actually take all of the knife commands and they put them into a file. So they can basically run the shell file to run the knife commands to then execute all these things. That just seems crazy. Chef Solo takes the chef out of a loop, and it basically uses rsync to just copy over all the files, all the cookbooks, recipes, and node configuration data to the server, and then uses SSH to run Chef Solo remotely on the server. That's kind of the, the, what I'm going to show today. Um, problem, of course, is that all this rsync and SSH is, is manual, and it's going to change you know, what exact files the configuration has to file that goes to certain places, all that's different for each node you want to deploy to, so we need some automation tools. Um, there were two out there that I found, one called Pocket Knife, one called Little Chef. These are written, respectively, written in Python. Um, and what they do is they automate the process of taking the configuration data from the repo, deploying it to a server, and then firing off Chef Solo. Um, but I didn't like them. Um, I played around with Little Chef for a while. It had some issues. It was, like, it was either buggy or somewhat weirdly uh, configured. I started looking into fixing it, and I realized it was going to take me a long time to figure out how to fix it, a little bit of spaghetti code. So I wrote Pantry, uh, which is a, a parallel kind of thing in Perl. Right now, just four simple things. Pantry init helps create a pantry, uh, which is a repository to hold configuration information. You can create a node, edit its data, and then synchronize to actually deploy it to a server. So really, really simple kind of, uh, I think it's almost all based on uh, net open SSH, which at least for Unix-based systems works pretty well. Um, so two parts to deploying Hello World. Um, first part, we make a directory to hold our configuration data called My Pantry. Go to the directory. We're going to put it uh, under Git. And now we write pantry init, which creates a, a number of uh, directories, kind of a skeleton to hold configuration. Um, we copy in the Pearl and Hello World cookbooks um, that live somewhere else in the system. We add them into the repository, commit it. So now we have all of that cookbook information into the pantry. We create a node, um, called, which in this case, I have a Dyn DNS to sort of reroute to the virtual machine. So thank you, Dyn, for providing free uh, dynamic DNS services, and then we edit the node file. And that looks like this. <coughs> so what Pantry will do, will, it will automatically give you name, and it'll give you a run list, but it'll just be uh, em an empty list of stuff. So what we have to do is edit the configuration file for this node and say, well, I want this node to run this recipe called Hello World. It says, when you run, run that recipe. And then I need to give it some uh, parameters. So hello world, I want the Perl version, Perl 5.14.2, and I want the deploy tag, version 1.0. So this says, get this version out of the repository, and Perl brew, use that version of Perl. If I wanted to use Perl 5.12.3, change it to Perl 5.12.3, and it would instead get deployed against 5.12.3. Um, a more advanced thing you can do, um, and this gets a little bit more into things that the ProBrew cookbook can do. Is you can actually define for ProBrew how it should work. So you can tell ProBrew, oh yeah, when you install, always use you know compile it for threads. If you want to do that for some reason, and you can also tell ProBrew when Pro ProBrew when you get bootstrapped, when your recipe runs, also install all these pearls that I've asked for. Um, and I can have a bigger run list up here. I can say, well, first actually run recipe ProBrew, and then run recipe Hello World. So when this recipe ProBrew kicks off. All these pearls will get downloaded, compiled, deployed. And then if you remember in recipe hello world, we said also include recipe program. Well, it's smart enough, this is the way configuration management works, it's smart enough to not then recompile 5.14.2. It simply says, oh, I need 5.14.2. 5.14.2 is already there. Great. Let me just move on from there. Um, so this is kind of how you use node configuration to then drive recipes. 
Um, so then the second part of deploying this, um, we add this into our repository, commit it, we can tag it. So this is our deploy hello world version 1.0. And this means we have version configuration. So if at any point in the future we say, oh, you know what? I really want to deploy this again to a different node, or I need to, uh, or that uh, server got blown away and I need to redeploy it somehow, you can just check out your repository back to this point. And it's like you've rewound your history of what you want your system to look like, and then you can deploy that. So you have version configuration. And then you're in pantry sync, and then you go get a cup of coffee. Because now what has to happen is you've got to download pull tarball, you've got to compile it, you've got to install carton, you've got to check out your app, you've got to compile all of its dependencies, and so all that stuff builds and runs for a while. But then at the end of that, it just works. Um, so right now, if we have a time, we can try a quick live demo, because uh, I've done everything up to the point of having things actually running. So you actually, if anybody is online, see laptops. Uh, if you go to XDG, VM, Dyn, DNS, Darn, you should get a 404 at the moment. Um, and let's see if we can. Survey says XDG. I'll try it. Still 404, right? Are you all on the same? Are you on the Wi Fi or are you on something else? Uh, I'm tunneling through some other server. Oh, and that will not work because that's that actually resolves to a 192, 168 uh, thing on the local web. Uh, Mine says could not find it. xdgvm.9dns.org. Socket operation timed out. Okay. Um, that's, so, I'm guessing that they put the packets. What's the socket? <laughs> All right, so what I just did is I just kicked off the synchronization. I hit return because it wasn't showing up. So this is what happens. Um, a whole bunch, I ran this command, sync, and a whole bunch of stuff um, just kind of went down the screen. So if we, if I can scroll up. So you can see lots of things started handling. So I chef run kicks off, sets the run list to recipe hello world. The run list is this. It's oh, all sorts of stuff. And at the end of all this, um, you see down here is carton exec dash I live star man do, 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 ran successfully, and now the app is up and running. Uh, so this is a virtual machine running on my laptop. Um, that I just had done. I had already done all the Perl install and everything. The only thing I hadn't done was actually had to kick off Starman. I actually ran this and then I killed Starman. Um, so I can show you that this actually does run, fires up a deployment on the virtual machine on my laptop. And there we go. So if I do it here, I should also get Hello World. So there's Hello World. My timestamp should be different than yours because we're, so it's, it's all real. Um, and we will. It should all be fine. It's just sitting there spinning around. I mean, it's it's the resolution. Of... <laughs> well, it's, it's, in a, it's in a VM, so you're welcome to and to give it a shot. So at this point, uh, Chef wants to roll a little bit better now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if, I, if I hit next slide and nothing happens, I'll know that the VM is sucking up all the resources. Uh, still some things that are missing, because this is something I've only really pulled together the last few weeks. So um, I need a lot better plaque automation. So right now there isn't uh, uh, the ability to kind of restart the server when you update the, you know, if you do check out a different uh, release point for the application, it doesn't automatically do the restarts right. Better carton automation, so if you've Cart and lock content changes, you really kind of need to redeploy those dependencies, better app deployment, more pantry features. Um, a lot more still to do, um, but help is, uh, Chef loves Perl more soon, and uh, happy to get help on this. So these are the repositories that kind of were involved. Uh, pantry is the one I showed you. I just deployed it to CPAN, I think, yesterday, so it's also not there. Perl Chef has the Perl Brew cookbook, and I imagine more cookbooks will come along, so I've made it a more generic Perl Chef cookbook. And this has the very simple hello world application in it if people want to sort of look at it and play around. So, uh, I'm going to be around tomorrow at the hackathon until at least kind of mid-afternoon. So if people are interested in uh, playing more with this or kind of seeing a little more about how it works or what it can do, uh, come find me later today or tomorrow. I'm happy to check. So that's it. Pearl, check it out.
any, any questions about uh, any of the stuff? It looks really useful and really awesome. So uh, getting a little documentation of how other people can be useful, like uh, not the documentation, but just like here's some easy to do's to like get your sink your teeth in and help you. That that would be really valuable. I think. So keep on. The this is this is my this is my first shot at starting to document how you can use it. So we need to, I need to obviously kind of get awesome. it more. Oh, it looks great. It looks really useful. So okay. thank you. cool. Thanks very much.